Hey guys, what's up? It's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome to Sci-Fi Month 2 once again. And uh, this is a, a little-known sci-fi movie that came out in 2011 that was a huge flop, and it didn't deserve it because it came, went up against the Smurfs that summer. And it's a film that is very a very well-done action sci-fi movie with an awesome cast, and it's called Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah, this is awesome. I love this movie. It was in my top... 10 favorite movies of 2011. If I was on YouTube that year, I would have said so. And uh, this is a better movie that Harrison Ford's in, you know, that it, it kicks the crap out of this his appearance in The Force Awakens. Yeah, he was one of the best things in that movie, but here, they do one thing right. They don't kill him off. Yeah, this movie, he he, he's a, he does a great performance, and he's a good... Uh, Foil for, you know, um, Daniel Craig, who's really good in this film with his American accent, you know, from the South. And then you have the gorgeous Olivia Wilde. I will say this until the very end. She is more beautiful than Daisy Ridley will ever be. I guarantee it. She's older. She has gorgeous green eyes. She has a citizenship in both Ireland and here. She has a face that's, like, majestic. Her voice is incredibly sexy. That long hair, that just, oh, that this woman is amazing. I love looking at this woman. The first time I saw her in Tron Legacy, I melted like a popsicle. And I was like, that woman, I want to see more of her stuff. And I do want to see her in other stuff uh, that she's recently done, because I haven't seen her in the theater in a long time. But she's awesome in this movie. Uh, the special effects are great in this movie. I think this it's, it's faster pace. It's got an extended cut. And it's shorter than The Force Awakens. It's got... A better director, John Favreau, a director that likes to have fun. He doesn't have to beat you over the head with nostalgia. Favreau did the first two Iron Man movies. He did Zathura, and he did this movie. He did the Jungle Book, but I'm that's the only thing he that was a job. That wasn't like oh, let's beat you over the head with nostalgia. He didn't write it. That was just a job for him. But Favreau, I've had more fun with him. He brought Iron Man to life, and I could never ever thank him enough for that. And he brought this to life, and this was based on a comic. I never heard of it, but it's an awesome movie. Don't let the, the box office fail fool you. It's better than Lone Ranger. It's better than John Carter. It's better than Avatar, which is boring as hell. It's better than any of the Transformers movies. You want to see something spe uh, sci-fi spectacle? See this. Um, The running time, I don't remember how long this movie is. I want to check here. Uh, the theatrical cut is an hour and 59 minutes. Extended cut, two hours and 15 minutes. Still shorter than any of the Transformers movies. It doesn't have stupid humor in it that makes the film sc slow down. It has an awesome cast. Daniel Craig, Harrison Ford, Olivia Wilde, um, Clancy Brown. Yeah, he plays kind of a preacher character that's kind of disposable in my opinion. I don't really care for him in the film. He's a good actor. Just here, I thought he was kind of there. Um, you got uh, Sam Rockwell, who's really good in the film. Uh, Noah Ringer, the kid that got all that crap for The Last Airbender, which I don't think is the worst movie of all time. Believe me, I have seen worse. <laughs> Critics, you have not delved into BS like I have. And uh, he's good. He plays a Native American kid that has a little knife, and he cuts an alien's heart open. It's freaking awesome. The aliens look scary in this movie. They're well done. They're green. They're menacing. They actually do something. They don't just, you know, sit on their arse and do nothing. And, uh, you know, the money's on screen. The big budget that Favreau had for this, I'm glad he didn't quit directing after this because he's great. I wish he had done Iron Man 3. He only produced it. He didn't direct it because Shane Black had to step in. And, well, you know how I feel about him. Anyway, this is an awesome movie. It's it's done very well. I have never seen the extended cut of this film, which is weird. But I will someday. I need to look back and watch a sci-fi movie that doesn't piss me off by killing off one of the most iconic actors of all time. Also, um... The film has, you know, the it, this this is a premise that could have failed miserably as, as a movie, but it works. You put a Western and sci-fi, mix them together, and make it fun, and it goes for it. I mean, I do have some problems. I don't think uh, uh, Sam Rockwell's wife in this movie, uh, Ana de Reguera, whatever the hell her name is, the woman from Nacho Libre and Cop Out, I do not care about that actress. She's dead wood. She's not, not needed in the film. I thought she could have been cut out. Rockwell should have just been a, a single man. Uh, also, there are some there there's some scenes that could have been cut out, like the scenes with the Native Americans is a little bit too long. 
it kind of drags the film a little bit. It's just that part. The rest of and also the religious stuff, but uh, with Clancy Brown. But other than that, it's a great sci-fi movie. I wanted to review this because I have never talked about this film, and it's very underrated. I don't think it deserved to bomb. Screw the Smurfs. I didn't like the Smurfs too. I thought it was BS. It wasn't funny. It was useless. It was a cash grab, and I'm glad it failed. And uh, the first movie I don't care about. So yeah, Sofia Vergara in the Smurfs movie. Yeah, not for me. Give me this any day over that. This is fun. This is badass. It's got a, it's got a good, pay, uh, you know, it's got a great story. Um, the special effects are well done. You know, it's got, it's, it's a movie that was underappreciated, and I think it deserved better. This and in time. That's another one I want to uh, review as well. And uh, what else can I say? It's a movie that surprised me, and you know, it, it's not a film that gets talked about a lot. A lot of critics crapped on it, saying it's terrible. It's not. It's awesome. What the what happened with last year's Star Wars should have happened with this movie. This movie should have made a billion dollars. This should have became a franchise. I would have liked to have seen Harrison Ford in this instead of in Ender's Game and getting killed off in The Force Awakens, which was a mistake. I don't care if it was his idea. It was a stupid idea. Here, as Dollar Hyde, he does not get killed, and it's awesome. And I'm like, cool, an old man that survives at the end, and Harrison is giving a great performance. It's like Indiana Jones on, you know from back in the West, but it's awesome. This movie is really cool. I would definitely advise you guys watch it and get the Blu-ray because it's the only way you can get the extended cut. And it's fun. And it's a it's a summer film that was definitely underappreciated. And I love this movie when I saw it in the theater. So that's my take on Cowboys and Aliens. Very underrated summer blockbuster. Thanks for watching, guys, and liking, subscribing, and commenting. You guys are awesome. I'm glad you're leaving suggestions in my uh, comment section. I will get to some of your other things later. Like, I haven't reviewed the Predator films. I haven't reviewed uh, the Aliens and Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection. But I'm getting to, you know, as much as I can. I mean, it's one month. So whatever I don't get to, I will talk to. I will talk about it in future installments of, you know, um, other theme months. Like, I'm going to do a sequel month and... Um, ne next month, July will be uh, movies from the 2000s, from 2000 to 2009, so then get ready for that. Just so you know, a little reminder. Anyway, thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.